the Bible declares that if we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. I believe we've created an atmosphere where the spirit of the Lord can dwell. I believe our worship has created an atmosphere that makes preaching easy. I believe we've created an atmosphere where our hearts are ready to receive. Hallelujah. If you could stand to your feet, I want you to go to Luke chapter 22. So grateful for the spirit of worship in this place. Thank you, praise and worship team. Thank you, musicians. Luke chapter 22, and I want us to look at verse 39 through 46. Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. The Bible declares this, that coming out, speaking of Jesus, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And verse 41 says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Somebody say he prayed. Saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Many of us have cups in our hand that we do not want to drink because we feel like it's too much. But not my will, but his be done. And then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. God will strengthen you if you drink that cup. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Verse 45 says, and when he rose up from prayer, he had come to his disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. I want to read verses 41 through 43 again. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed and saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to minister from this subject, the place of stretching. The place of stretching. Somebody say the place of stretching. Many believers dwell and die in the place between potential and promise. I want y'all to hear what I just said. Many believers on this journey, we dwell and die in between the place of potential and promise. And here's one of the reasons why we die in this place between potential and promise is because we don't want to be stretched. Say, I don't want to be stretched. Uh, this is a sad tragedy because this is the place where many believers dwell and die in their walk with God. I, I, I believe it's on the screen. I need y'all to see this. Here's what I'm saying about this place between potential and promise. It's the place of contentment. Many believers are simply content. This is why we dwell and die in this place of, of, of potential and promise. It means, in other words, many of us, we may not declare it with our mouths, but we say, I have enough of God. Somebody say contentment. Uh, it, it, this place is also the place of convenience. In other words, we may not declare it, but many of us say that requires too much of me to receive that from God. I'm, 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 I, I want to remain very convenient. And this is also the place of complacency uh, that doesn't move me enough to receive from God. If, I, if I'm not moved, I'm not going to stretch myself enough to get this from God so we dwell and die in the place between potential and promise. Believers that are unwilling, unmoved, and unable to be stretched by God. And watch this. Therefore, we forfeit much of what God wants to do in us, for us, and through our lives. Did y'all hear what I just said many times? When we're unwilling uh, to be moved or stretched to this place, we forfeit what God wants to do for us. Tell your neighbor, don't forfeit all of that. 
How, why is this significant? Because stretching is intended, watch this, to bring us to the fullness of Christ. Whenever God stretches me, he's trying to bring me to the fullness of Christ. In other words, fulfill our capacity to receive the wholeness of God, do the will of God, and complete the work of God. Watch this, specifically and uniquely designed for my life. Somebody say, my life. I'm not talking about Pastor Keith's life. I'm not talking about Pastor Cole's life, but I'm talking about my life. If I dwell and die in the place between potential and promise, I forfeit all of what God wants to do. Watch this uniquely in my life. I want y'all to consider the natural definition of stretching. Notice what the, the dictionary says about stretching. It says to expand or extend, watch this, beyond natural or proper limits in order, watch this, to fulfill a larger function. Y'all got to stay with me. God wants to stretch me in order to fulfill a larger function. There's a greater function or capacity that we've been called to fulfill, but it requires us being stretched. Oh, tell your neighbor, I want to be stretched. I hope y'all want to be stretched this morning because I believe God's going to stretch us. I believe scripture reveals that we've all been given a capacity. Or, or, or how scripture even paints it, we've all been given a cup. Somebody say, I have my own cup. I, we've been given this cup. I, Jesus speaks of this cup in our foundational text in Luke 22, verse 42. He also speaks of a cup in Matthew chapter 20. He also speaks of this cup in Mark chapter 10. And notice how he speaks of this cup in, in, in this manner in John 18, 11. The Bible says, shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Uh, Paul even alluded to his own spiritual cup in Philippians chapter 2 and 2 Th Timothy chapter 4. In other words, scripture reveals that we've all been given this cup. Somebody say capacity. Uh, I've, been, I've been given this capacity that I'm called, watch this, to fill and fulfill. And capacity, hear this, requires us to be stretched by God. Therefore, our prayers, believers, must be that we do not dwell and die in between the place of promise and potential. Listen, I don't want to live this journey and get to glory. And God said, you spend all of your time between potential and promise. We've got a lot of believers that spend our time there. And God says, I'm simply trying to stretch you so that you might get the wholeness of Christ in your life. Uh, we don't want to remain in a place of contentment in the place of convenience or the place of complacency. But we must feel and fulfill our capacity. Our prayer must be, Lord, stretch us. Because as it is in the natural, so it is with believers. We have too many believers that die with untapped potential. I need y'all to stay with me. Just as it is in the natural, we have many believers that die with untapped potential. Somebody say untapped potential. I need our focus to be good this morning, all right? So let's not be all over the place. I need our focus because I believe God is trying to take us somewhere. Uh, here's a word of wisdom. Hear this. When you're not stretched by God, by default, you conform to the masses. Say you conform to everybody else. Come on. Somebody say you conform to everybody else. And watch this. Conformity is always rooted in carnality. Y'all got to stay with me. Tell your neighbor, don't conform. That means you're never really spiritual until you allow the Lord to stretch you. I want to be stretched by God. Therefore, over the course of this sermon series, we're going to talk about Lord stretch us. This is our, our sermon series that I'm delving in. And we will examine what it means to be stretched by God. I'm going to talk about the price of stretching, the process of stretching, and the promise of stretching. But this morning, I want to examine the place of stretching. And notice this, this is where we find Jesus in our foundational text, at the place of stretching. And it's more than a calling of our capacity, but it's the consummation of our capacity. In other words, the place of stretching is the place of agreement. Somebody say the place of agreement. When, whenever I get to this place of stretching, in other words, what I'm saying, God, is that I'm walking and coming into agreement with what you want to do in my life. Somebody say, I've got to come into agreement with God. 
So, so, so this is what I'm going to talk about. How do we now come into agreement with what God wants to do in my life and stretch me? This morning I want us to come in agreement with all that God wants to do for us, in us, and with us. And I believe we can glean how to do so through our text and through the example of Jesus. So let's examine our text and I'm going to be out your way. I want us to look at verse number 39. Notice what the Bible says, and I believe it's on our screens. I, I don't know if, I, I believe my wife walked in, in the room. I want to see if we can get this other TV on, but just look to this screen over here. The Bible says, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. Here's the one thing that I want you to know about the place of stretching. It's, it's, it's the place where I'm pressed. It's a place of pressing. Somebody say pressing. A place of pressing, or better yet, pressure, uh, is what pushes us to our promise. If I never experienced pressure in my life, I'll never be pushed to the promise that God has for my life. Y'all, somebody say, I need pressure. Oh, I need pressure. Y'all won't run at it anymore. Our ability to endure pressure, is what, watch this, is what makes us eligible for the promise. Did y'all catch what I just said? If, if, it's one thing for the promise to be spoken over my life, but what makes me eligible for the promise is how I endure pressure. And we got a lot of believers that don't know how to endure. Somebody say pressure. pressure. I've got to endure pressure, pressure, pressure. And here lies the problem with many believers is that they fail to take hold of what the Lord has promised them because they would rather watch this, have what's easy rather than endure the journey. When we sign up, for this thing called Christianity, the reason why a lot of folk never get what has been promised to them is because we want this journey to be easy rather than endure. Uh, Y'all can go to the seeker-friendly church if you want it easy. Unable and unwilling to take pressure and pressing. Oh, that's a sad tragedy. Notice where we find Jesus in our foundational text. The Bible says the Mount of Olives. And here's the significant thing about olives is that the benefits are not truly realized until they are pressed. Did y'all just heard what I just said? You, you can have you a bottle of olives, but you'll never get the benefits until it's pressed. Tell your neighbor, I've got to be pressed. Ah, this, this means that God, watch this, we can never be partakers of those benefits void of the pressing. This means those that God has assigned to benefit from your life and ministry will never be partakers if you are unwilling to be pressed. The only reason I can be a blessing to folk is because I allow God to press me. Many of us want to do things for God and many of us want us people to be blessed by our ministry, but nobody will ever be a partaker of what God has deposited in you until you are. Somebody say pressed. I want to be pressed. Uh, we got folks that want license and, and ordinations but don't want to be pressed. Uh, watch this. If you're unwilling to be pressed, many of us need to ask ourselves how many people, watch this, connected to us have suffered because we did not want to be pressed. That means, watch this, y'all got to stay with me. God has assigned some people in my life to benefit from what he's deposited in me. And if I never allow myself to endure the pressure, I call somebody assigned to my life to suffer. So I've got to ask myself, who suffered because I was unwilling to be pressed? Notice what Paul says. I believe it's on our screen. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain, watch this, the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. We must endure pressure and the pressing for the sake of God's people. I know you want it to be easy, but God says, I need you to do it for my people. Uh, uh, so Paul said, I'm going to do it for the sake of the elect. Someone needs me to be stretched. Somebody say that to your own self. Somebody needs me to be stretched. And hear this. Here's a warning. Your desire for your journey to be easy may determine someone how somebody else spends their eternity. Did y'all catch what I just said? Your desire for your journey to be easy might determine how somebody spends eternity. Good. Notice what Paul says. For the very sake of the elect that they might come into salvation. Ooh, that's good news to me. I don't want somebody's eternity to be because that, that, that I did not want to be pressed. Uh, what do I mean? We've got too many believers that run at the sign of affliction. 
We've got too many believers that give up. Watch this at the start of adversity. Y'all don't even get into adversity. It's at the start of it. And watch this. We got too many believers that complain at every stage of the attack. This is one of the worst people that I hate to counsel. That after I counsel you in the place of attack, you got to complain at every stage of the attack. And somebody's suffering because I run at affliction. I give up at the start of the attack and I cannot and I complain at every stage of the attack. In other words, we have too many believers that fold in the face of pressure and therefore you have no witness for the world. Did y'all catch what I just said? If I fold at the face of pressure, I do exactly what the world does. So I have no witness to get them where they need to go in eternity. Oh, I've got to face pressure, face pressure. And hear this, God has no need for weak and no witness believers. Oh, y'all thought y'all was doing the work for God, but you're weak and you have no witness. The world knows how to run. The world knows how to give up. And the world knows how to complain. But as believers, we're called to endure, or in other words, remain in the place of pressing. Oh, I've got to remain in that place. And here's the rea reality. I need somebody to know this. Once you got saved, you immediately signed up, watch this, for pressure. As soon as you got saved, many people, we celebrate because we say heaven rejoices when one come. And we like, oh, Lord, I'm going to see my grandma in glory. But as soon as you got saved, you signed up for pressure. Oh, tell your neighbor, that's what you signed up for. See, they don't tell you that at the altar. Because what the Lord wants to do is get out of you requires pressing. It requires pressing. You've got to ask yourself, do I want to get pressed? That's a critical question. If I want to fulfill this cup that God has given me, if I want to fulfill the capacity that God has given me, I've got to ask myself, do I want to get pressed? Uh, do I want to get pressed? And symbolically in our text, we find Jesus in the place of pressing. Where many biblical scholars would say that he was under the most intense pressure of his earthly ministry. The Bible says that he sweat as blood drops. Uh, biblical scholars would say he was under the most intense pressure. Think about the power that Jesus had. He could have just turned away, y'all. I don't need all of this. I sit at the right hand of my father. So he was under this intense pressure. Ah, but, but yet consider what our text says concerning Jesus and this place. Notice what the Bible says. As he was accustomed. Somebody say accustomed. In other words, Jesus knew the more he was pressed, the more somebody else would prosper. So he said, I got to keep going to this place. Many times it is difficult to see believers go through so much. But what I realize along this journey is God's just trying to get more out of me. And the only reason he's trying to get more out of me because somebody needs to prosper as a result of my pressing. Listen, I, I, was, I remember just a few years ago, and I know she doesn't mind me saying this, but, but um, Minister Chantel was going through affliction after affliction, issue after issue, and it bothered me because I'm like, God, why are you causing her to go through so much? And you wonder why God always gives her an assignment to minister to somebody because she's been pressed so that God might get the benefits out of her. Oh, I want God to get some benefits out of me. Uh, he wanted God to get all that he could out of his life. But this required him to be, watch this, under constant and consistent pressure. He welcomed pressure rather than whining about pressure. And hear this, we've got too many believers needing counsel because of pressure. Always crying because of pressure and always calling on someone to pray for them because of pressure. We need to welcome, somebody say welcome pressure. Oh, that's, a, that, that's good news to me. I welcome it and stop whining. Somebody may be saying, why, wow, Pastor Keith? I, it's, it's tough. You don't know the lot that I've been given. Because if you always feel the pressure of your walk with God, and if you feel that you're constantly being pressed in your walk with God, watch this. All this means is that God has more to get out of you. We've got to change our perspective around pressure. If, if, if I feel like I'm always under constant pressure, that I always feel like I'm being pressed, God, thank you. You're trying to get more out of me. 
Oh, that's good news to me, y'all. I hope y'all hear me. Ah, God has to get more out of us. So how much do you want God to get out of you? That, 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 that's a question we got to ask. How much do you want God to get out of you? And here's the good news that feel like the pressure is too much. The reason you can endure is because when God presses you, you will always prevail. Tell your neighbor, I'll always prevail. People feel like the pressure would take them out, but God says, if I'm pressing you, you're going to always prevail. Yeah. How do I know? It should be on your screen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 9 says this. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. You've been built to prevail the pressure. Tell your neighbor, I've been built to prevail the pressure. We've got too many folks falling out of the race, and you don't know that God said you're hard-pressed on every side. But you're not crushed. God said you will not be destroyed. But I've got to know that when God is pressing me, I'm built to prevail. Tell your neighbor, I'm built to prevail. Oh, that's good news to me. So if we desire to be stretched and we desire to fill our capacity, then we must accept that the place of stretching is also a place of Pressing. If you're under great pressure in this season, you're in a good place. Tell your neighbor you're in a good place. All right, so let's look at this. Let's look at verse number 40 and 41. It says, and when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. I want us to stop right there. Familiarity can sometimes hinder our ability to fulfill our capacity. When, when familiar, somebody say familiar folk. What do I mean? As God stretches you, everyone is not called to go with you, even those that are close to you. I've got to know that. I've, I've got to know that if I want to be stretched by God. Ah, because watch this. Oh, listen, hear this. Notice what Jesus does in our foundational text concerning his disciples. The Bible says he was withdrawn from them. And hear this, I need y'all to understand this in the text. Jesus led them, but he still withdrew from them. Huh? Jesus gave them lessons, but he still withdrew from them. And watch this, Jesus even loved them, but he still withdrew from them. Oh, y'all got to stay with me. And this is why the place of stretching is also a place of pruning. If you want to be stretched by God, some folk going to have to get pruned in your life. Okay, see, we don't like that because you, you, you too close to them. Because even the people you lead, gave lessons to, and love many times can have, have to stay where you found them while God stretches you. Everybody can't go with you. Notice what the Lord told Gideon before he went into war in Judges 7 and 2. It's on your screen. The Bible says the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Because everyone is not called to go with you. Oh, we've got to get this. This may lift a burden for somebody, but you can leave someone and still love them. I hope that just helps somebody. You can leave them and still love them. Somebody say, you better ask Jesus. Jesus may have left them for a moment, but he still loved them. Right, because watch this, we've got too many believers in toxic relationships, watch this, still living with their mama and still hanging with demonic friends because you thought your leaving meant you didn't love them. I promise you, you got some folk under the guise of codependence still living with their mama because they feel like if I leave her, I don't love her. You got some folk... Watch this, that are in churches because that's where I grew up. That's where I got saved. But I realized God is calling me to another place. But I feel like if I leave, it'll signify that I do not love them. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you can leave them and still love them. Uh, God has given you, watch this, permission to live, leave them, yet still love them. Oh, my God. Somebody say the devil is a lie. Herein lies the problem with many believers. We negate our stretching because we waste time trying to pull people into places they were never called to go. Did y'all hear what I just said? The reason why many of us can't be stretched by God is because we're trying to pull folk that was called, that were never called to go with us. Tell your neighbor, sometimes people are seasonal. Sometimes people are seasonal while I'm being stretched. Daughter, I'll catch you in another season. God is stretching you to that place, not them. God is stretching you to school, not them. 
God is stretching you to sacrifice, not them. And God is stretching you to serve and not them. Stop trying to take them with you. Oh, tell your neighbor, stop trying to take them with you. Because watch this, we waste time and we wait on those who don't have the capacity to go with us. Did y'all hear what I just, because remember what I said, we've all been given a cup. So everyone has this different level of capacity to go where God is calling me. So I've got to make sure that I don't try to give somebody a cup that was never assigned to them. Stop trying to pull people who don't have the capacity to go with you. Listen, I love some folk in my, when I, my, my pre-salvation self. I still love them, but I know they could not go with me. Oh, y'all, uh, y'all don't like that. Y'all, y'all got some friends you still want to go with you. Ah, notice this. Uh, no, we, we, many of us waver. Not only do we waste time, not only do we wait on those who don't have the capacity to go with us, many times we waver in our decision because of the opinions of those that know nothing of where God is taking us. Did y'all hear what I just said? Many times we share stuff with where God is trying to take us, and because of familiarity, we, we waver in what God is telling us to do because of people that are close to us but yet have no idea of where God is taking me. Right. I'm going to give you all an example because you all ain't feeling me. I need us to look in the Bible. Go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 22 through 23. Y'all should know this. We heard this in Sunday school. When Jesus had to tell Peter, this is where I need to go. I need to go to the cross. I need to be crucified. Watch what Peter said. Then P Peter took him aside. Come here, Jesus. I, I know you saying all that. But he said, you know how you got to slide somebody to the side because you don't want nobody else to hear what I got to say. The Bible says he took him to a side and began to rebuke him. And saying, for if it be from you, Lord, this shall not happen. How many folk done took us to the side to try to rebuke us about where God is calling us to go? Notice what Jesus had to say. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Because it's better, watch this, for you to prune familiar people for the sake of your stretching before God has to prune them. Did y'all hear what I just said? It's better for you to prune familiar people for the sake of your stretching before God has to do it. Oh, I got to get in the way before God do. Jesus called them Satan. Oh, my God. I hope y'all feeling me. Right, here's a good litmus test for those of you that need to prune in your place of stretching. Are those that you have to compel and those that complain? Did y'all hear what I just said? When, when God is both stretching both of you, you don't have to compel nobody to go with you. I'm going to give y'all a small example. I love Jayla. All right, that's, that's, that's Minister LaShawn, baby. I love her. All right, and when they were on this transition to start this ministry, I felt so bad because Jayla was leaving some friends from a former ministry. But you know what the daughter said? Mama, I'm going to be okay. Because she understood nobody had to compel her where God was trying to take her family. Ooh, that's the no. Watch it, that's family, y'all. I should never have to compel you if we're both on the same journey. And then you got folk that complain. Those are folk that you need to prune. Uh, because watch this. Uh, Jesus had to compel his disciples to pray. But when God is attempting to stretch you, you don't have time to stop, compel, and counsel folk that don't want to come. I ain't got time to counsel and compel because God is trying to stretch me. Uh, uh, some of us need to stop trying to persuade and just prune. I know we don't like that. Stop trying to persuade and just prune. Some folk just got to be cut off for a season. And hear this. Those who catch the revelation of God's plan for stretching don't need to be persuaded. We ain't have to persuade that baby because she had already caught revelation of God's plan for the stretching. If you can't catch God's plan, then that's a sign that you need to be pruned. When God speak to me, I ain't gotta, I'm not coming back for no multiple meetings. I'm not having multiple sit downs. If God did not prepare the way and you ain't catch the plan, baby, it's time to prune. Okay, that's, that should have lifted something from somebody. 
No, no, we, we don't need no second meter. No, if you ain't catch it, I'm sorry, baby. You just didn't catch it. Because our stretching by God is also a place of pruning. I'm almost out y'all way, y'all. Uh, let's look at the, the second portion of verse 41 and 42. I believe God is trying to stretch us in this season. The Bible says, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Hear this. The, uh, the place of prayer is the place where the Lord's plan for our stretching is revealed. It's, the, it's in the place of prayer. If I want to know why God is stretching me, I got to find myself in the place of prayer. Uh, so here's the third point. Uh, pl the place of stretching is also a place of prayer. Because uh, notice this. This is why Jesus made this declaration to the Father in prayer. Not my will, but yours be done. Because your ability, watch this, to pursue stretching, to persevere in stretching, and to receive the promise of stretching is when we can receive and submit to the plans of God for our stretching. Listen, I'll never pursue that. If, no, I don't want that kind of pressure. I, I'll never pursue it. I'll never persevere in it. And I'll never receive the promise until God reveals the plans. Somebody say, I need to know the plans. I, I ain't got to know the details, but God, give me some of the plans. I, I, and, and if I want to know God's plans, I got to find myself in the place of prayer. The revelation is always found in the place of prayer. Listen, folk who got real revelation are folk who find themselves on their face. Tell your neighbor, I got to find myself in the place of prayer. You can't be no preacher and don't find yourself in prayer. Revelation is found. You can't be no prophet and don't pray. It, revelation is found in the place of of matter of fact you don't need no prophet if you can find yourself watch this in the place of prayer Amen. got folk looking for revelation and god saying is find yourself on your face Amen. so hear this the pressure of stretching will always be overwhelming void of prayer the the pruning of people will always be unbearable void of prayer if i don't if i don't find myself in prayer i always feel like i can't cut that one off and the purpose of stretching will always, watch this, be unattainable, void of prayer. Even more, it's important to know that it is God's will for our stretching so that we aren't stretched in vain. Did y'all hear what I said? It's important to know God's will for stretching or many times, y'all need to stay with me, our stretching will be in vain. I want y'all to understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, th what, what are you trying to say, Pastor Keith? Many have started ministries, somebody say stretched. And God's will was never in it. Did, did y'all hear what I just said? I don't want to be stretched in vain. Many of us have sold our whole paycheck and God was never in it. Stretched. Because I never found myself in the place of prayer. Amen. Oh, y'all don't like that. Many folk have gotten married to folk. Stretched. But they, God's will was never in it. Because they never found themselves in the pray, place of prayer. Many people feel like I'm under this great pressure. I feel like I'm being stretched by God, and I feel like it's God's will. I mean, and then what you need to do is ask him, are you in prayer? Because God will reveal if this stretching is his will. Ooh, I need to know if this is his will. I told Serena, I said, if this church thing ain't going to work out, I got to sit my hind parts down because it ain't worth all this stretching. Oh, y'all don't like that. Oh, it's not worth the stretching. It's not worth the stretching. I, I, I need us to hear this. Notice this. And many of us have moved to new cities. Somebody say stretch. stretch. And God's will was never in it. Stretched in vain and could have avoided much heartache if they would have found themselves in the place of prayer. You stretch yourself and not God. We've substituted, I want y'all to hear me and hear me good, We've substituted the voice of pastors rather than pray. We've substituted the voice of mega ministers void of prayer. I don't want, I, I know, listen, I know Pastor Keith here from God, but you better find your butt behind in prayer. How do you know, I, how many of y'all know people have been deceived by the men and women of God? And they could have avoided much heartache if they would have found themselves in prayer. Oh, it's always found. Revelation is always found in prayer. Hey, here's a word of wisdom. When God wants to pour more into you, he will always call you to the place of prayer. 
Did y'all hear what I just said? Whenever, this is how you know when God wants to do. I went, when, when God was calling me to plant the church, he always called me back to the place of prayer. He was giving me revelation about the vision, revelation about what we should do, revelation about what, what it should look like. Whenever God's calling you to more, tell your neighbor he's going to call you to prayer. Yeah. Listen, you can, you, you, can, you can catch a whole bunch of jack legs. Oh, you got a vision? How, how much have you spent in prayer? Because God going to always call you to pray. Yo, but, oh, you called to, to pastor. Have you been called to pray? And here lies one of the reasons why many believers dwell and die in a place of potential. It's because many fail to dwell in prayer. This is why even Jesus told his disciples in Luke 18, 1. Watch what he says. Men ought always pray and not lose heart. Therefore, the question we must ask ourselves is, when God begins to stretch us, can we find ourselves in supplication? Somebody say prayer. Better yet, prior to our stretching, can we be found in prayer? Why is this significant? Because prayer prepares us for our stretching and prayer preserves us in our stretching. If you want to be preserved, you got to find yourself in prayer. If you want to be prepared before God starts to stretch you, you've got to find yourself in prayer. Tell your neighbor, find yourself in prayer. Hey, this is why our text says Jesus was accustomed to this place because this was a place of perpetual prayer for him. And if we desire to be stretched by God, then we must submit to the fact that the place of stretching is a place of prayer. Many believers sing the words of Tasha Cobb's song, fill me up till I overflow. I, I want to run over. I want to run over. Yet God can't fill us until we allow the Lord to stretch us. I need us to say this collectively. Those that are watching, put it in the comment box. Lord, stretch us. Lord, stretch us. He has given us a cup and a capacity to be filled, yet it requires for us to be stretched. And that stretching requires a place. It's a place of pressing. It's a place of pruning. And it's a place of prayer that will take us from potential to promise. I don't want to die and dwell in between the place of potential and promise. We got too many believers like that. Yet why does it take us from potential to promise? I believe in verse 43 of our foundational take reveals the reason why. Notice verse 43. It's on your screen. The Bible says, and then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Because the enduring of the stretching of Lord will always require power that is not of yourself. Amen. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. This place of pressing, this place of pruning, this place of prayer will always take me to a place of power. Tell your neighbor, I need power. I need power. The reason that you can endure this place of stretching, God says if you, can, if you can find yourself being pressed, if you can find yourself pruning, if you can find yourself in prayer, God says, I'll give you power. And watch this. He's an assigned an angel to strengthen Jesus. There's been a heavenly body that's been assigned to give you strength in your place of stretching. Oh, I'll tell you, neighbor, that's power that never runs out. I believe God wants to, us to survive our stretching because the Lord will strengthen us. Hear this. This is not just any sermon series. I There's a lot on my heart, y'all. The Lord woke me up late last night, and I don't want to share this word now, but I will share it in a soon coming day. I'm going to record it so that we have clarity about where I believe God is taking us. But I believe if you're connected to this church, God is trying to stretch you individually. I believe many of us are under the in most intense pressure of many of our earthly journeys. But God says, there's more that I want to get out of you. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I want to be stretched. If you want to be stretched, I want us to stand to our feet. I want us to stand to our feet. I want to pray. Everybody that, that is watching online that desires to be stretched, the Lord has something to say to us. I, I'm going to share it in the soon coming day. But it begins in the place of stretching. Father, we bless you. And let us lift our hands as a sign of surrendering. Father, we surrender to the stretching. Because, and when we surrender, God, we know we shall survive. God, thank you, God, that there's more that you want to get out of us. God, I pray, God, over every individual in this place. God, I've heard so many stories. God, people going into normal procedures for surgery and something tragic happens. God, you're stretching. Miss Sharon, God, and we thank you for it. 
God even missed Nicole from losing loved one after loved one after loved one. God, it's an intense place in our journey. But God, you're stretching her. God, even my wife, God, who's worked 10 years for an institution, and God, you're calling her to a shift. It's under intense pressure. Thank you, God, for the stretching. I know many of us are going through a time of stretching. God, but you said, God, that you've given us power to prevail even the pressing. Help us, God, on today. God, there's somebody that's going to benefit from what's inside of us. But God, we've got to be stretched. So God, I pray now, God, for every believer under the sound of my voice that's experiencing the pressing of you. God, you're pressing us because you want to get something out of us. Help us to endure. Matter of fact, God, we know we will endure, God, because you've built us to prevail. The very fact, God, that we're standing, the very fact that we can lift our hands and worship, God, even when our flesh don't feel like it, God, we've commanded our flesh to bow down to you. God, because you've built us to prevail. And God, we thank you for that. God, we'll, we'll come to the place of pressing. God, many of us, I, I, I know, I, I feel it in my spirit. I know you feel like the marriage is overwhelming. But God says, I've built you to prevail. I know it feels like you're in this journey alone, but God has built you to prevail. And God, we thank you, God, that in this season of stretching, we may have to prune some folk. But it's okay, God, because we can leave them and still love them. God, let us not get caught up in the fact, believing that if we leave them, God, that we don't love them. God, we can leave that ministry. We can leave that friendship. We can leave it and still love them. Let us not find ourselves, God, trying to compel and counsel folk that don't have the capacity to go where we're going. But God, when we recognize, oh, they complaining, that's a sign that we need to prune. Help us, God, come to the place of prune. And God, I pray, God, for all of these believers, God, that we'll find ourselves in the place of prayer. You told the disciples, Jesus told his disciples, men ought always pray. It's prayer, God, that gives us revelation. God, this won't catch us off guard because you've given us revelation. Thank you, God, that there's more that you want to get out of us. And God, if we can find ourselves at the place of pressing, the place of pruning, and the place of prayer, God, you'll give us great power. We receive it, God, with our hands lifted power even now somebody wants to give up God but give them power God matter of fact God the angel that's been assigned to them God God calls your angel now even with our hands lifted up to strengthen us God that we may endure and receive the promise of our stretching we love you and adore you God thank you God for stretching us because there's more that you want to get out of us and every heart that believes said thank God and amen give God a hand clap of prayer Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There may be somebody that's watching. And not that God is stretching you, but God is giving signs that he's trying to tug you towards him. God can't stretch those that don't belong to him, but he will tug those. And, and the Bible says, with loving kindness have I drawn them. Somebody is experiencing the love of God, and God is trying to draw you towards him. Somebody who doesn't have a relationship with the Father says, I want to have this kind of relationship with him. I want, I want to be in a place where I can receive revelation from God. I want to be in a place where I can receive power from God. I, I want to be in a place where God can get benefits out of my life. The only way God can get benefits out of your life is when you have a bond with him through his son, Jesus Christ. So if you say in this morning, I want, to, I want to have a relationship with Christ that I might have a relationship with God. Here's what you got to do. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. That means we've all sinned. This pastor, these musicians, the worship team that was up here, my wife, my kids, all of us in here that now know God have fallen short of his glory and sinned. So God says, I've got, I've got to recognize that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. And then our foundational uh, um, scripture for this church is John 14, 6. The Bible says, no man comes to the father but by me. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that means there's no multiple ways to God, but there's only one way. 
So you may be saying this morning, what's that way? That way is Jesus Christ. So I'm a savior. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. And that's only savior is Jesus Christ. And then if you can declare this, that I want Jesus now to Lord over my life. The Bible says even the demons believe. The demons know that Jesus exists, but they don't allow Jesus to Lord over their lives. And you say, I want him to Lord over my life. God says, if you can confess that with your mouth and believe that in your heart, you are saved. If you made that decision, said, I've made that decision this morning. Put that in the comment box. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you, God, for the one that has come. We thank you, God, for the life that has now been transformed. God, we thank you, God, for the one that has now been snatched from the hands of the enemy. They come from darkness into the marvelous light. They've made the greatest decisions of their life and it calls them to know, God, that heaven is rejoicing now because of their one life. And God, I pray now, God, for their journey ahead. Once we get saved, we signed up for pressure. That life is now under constant pressure. But God, we thank you, God, that you've built us to prevail pressure and cause them to know that as well. Give them a church family. Give them a local body that can encourage them, that can um, admonish them, that could pray for them and walk alongside them in this journey. God, let them know, God, that they're not called to do this journey alone. For it's a difficult journey you've called us on. But God, with the help of other believers, we can endure. We love you and adore you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you made that decision, I want you to send us an email to church office at waytampabay.org. We'll touch base with you. We'll follow up with you. And we'll, we want to make sure that your salvation and election is sure. Or you can message us on Facebook. Tell us that you've made this decision to follow Christ. And we'd love to connect with you. And there may be somebody else that's watching and you say, I, I need a church family. I, I, I've, I've been deceived by pastors. I, I've, I've substituted the voice of men for the place of prayer. And I realize I've never had teaching like this. There's something about the worship. There's something about the word. There's something about this atmosphere that has been created that I need to be a part of. If that's you, we'd love to be your church family. All you got to do is message us on Facebook. Or send us an email again to church office at waytampabay.org. We'll tell you how you can be connected with this local body. So I love y'all. I adore y'all. Hey, be on uh, the lookout for a video message from myself. I, I want to share what the Lord shared with me late last night. And I believe this sermon series will prepare us for where the Lord is taking us. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Cole to come at this time. He's going to take us further in the service. Can we just give God another hand clap of praise? Thank God for Pastor Keith on today. Um, the only reason why this church is here, the reason why we're standing, um, the reason why even uh, that so many came out was because of that pressure that was placed on his life. So let's continue to pray for him, for his family, everything that continues to press up against that um, and the pruning that they had to do and how some people didn't agree with it and how he has to constantly stay in prayer. Let's mimic that even in our own lives on today. So I thank God for that. Um, I know you know someone, someone that you need to share this message with, someone that needs a church home, someone that got uh, pulled away from church. Can you, can you share this message with them on today? Maybe you don't know how to bring someone to Christ, but guess what? Technology made it really simple. Share this message. Each and every one of you can do it in some way, shape, or form. We have podcasts. We got Facebook. We got YouTube. We got so many different ways that we can share the gospel. How about use just one of them? just like it only took one man to save us. And so there's just a couple of quick announcements and we'll be gone for today. One, I'm, this is not an announcement, but I want to thank God for every person that showed up on today. This is nothing against those that are watching us streaming, but they heard the message of what the storm was still coming and they came anyway. So we thank God for everybody that is actually in the house of the Lord on today. Um, as we know, uh, the doors of the church are open. God is continually healing the land uh, for those that have been and continue to be vaccinated. It is helping us heal the land. We prayed. We asked God for something. This may be the way out. We have decided to go back into the house of the Lord, and we invite you to join us in the sanctuary every Sunday at 1030 a.m. as a corporate body. We need you here. As always, the sanctuary will be safe and sanitized. We have sanitizing stations. We have seats that are socially distanced. Um, 
will continue to follow the CDC guidelines for those that desire to worship with us. Uh, we are praying that our church family will again gather in the house of the Lord. We're doing everything we can to make sure that you can receive the gospel. Remember, COVID-19 vaccination sites, as believers, we should all do what we can to care for our neighbors. Um, and we believe uh, getting vaccinated in a way is a way in which we can tangibly care for our neighbors and ourselves. Now that vaccination sites are open to everyone 16 or and older, all of us without, are without an excuse. Pastor Keith and Lady Serena are leading by example and have scheduled their appointment. Y'all give them a hand clap of praise because there are plenty of pastors out there that are not saying this for their church. And of course, it's still always a decision, but they want to lead the way also and get vaccinated. So if you would like to get vaccinated as well, uh, please use the link that was sent out in the week at the way to find a location for an appointment. And also the Lord stretched us. Join us again on next Sunday via Facebook Live or in person as we learn how to increase our capacity to receive all that the Lord has called for us to do. Pastor Keith has prepared a uh, a life-changing sermon series for all those that have an ear to hear and a heart to receive our prayers that uh, we our prayer must be Lord stretch us somebody say stretch us we are still in a season of prayer as we continue in this series uh, th that we're being stretched he desires to stretch us and how he desires to stretch us this series is intended to prepare us individually and as a church to where the Lord wants to take us but that next but that y'all work with me because it's three that's here <laughs> next will only be revealed in prayer let us be in a season of specific prayer until the lord reveals what he wants us to stretch on so be in specific prayer about what he wants us to stretch us on and i'm almost done um welcome house of hope we remember we're talking about connection if you hadn't seen it yet pastor keith shared with us that this will be a year of connection and God has already began to manifest his word. The way the church has connected with this, uh, with the Hispanic church, the house of hope, and they will begin having services in our sanctuary today at 3 PM. Look how God is growing the way church and the connections. And last but not least, there's some ways to give. So if you've been tuned in, Oh, I'm sorry. And there was one more thing. Let us treat Pastor Jose and his wife and the church family as our own family as they share the sanctuary and spread the gospel in the Hispanic community. And so right now is giving time, church. And, you know, here at The Way, according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, you know, you must decide in your heart how much to give. And you don't give reluctantly or in a response to pressure. For God loves a cheerful giver. So if you haven't already gave or you're preparing, you're giving, you, of course, if you're in person, we have baskets, we have envelopes. Uh, we have some gentlemen back there. If you want to raise your hand, if you don't have one in the back of your seat pocket, you raise your hand, they'll pass you an envelope and you can fill that out, put it in the basket as you leave the sanctuary. Also, you can do it securely on our website right there. Clicking on the button, it takes you straight to PayPal where you can give securely there at the Way Church of Tampa Bay. And of course, on Cash App, dollar sign, the Way Church of TV. Once again, dollar sign, the Way Church of TV, if you want to give via Cash App. And last but not least, if you want to mail it in, that is P.O. Box 28003, Tampa, Florida, 33682. Once again, P.O. Box 280003 Tampa, Florida 33682. Pastor Keith is coming back with one more word. Hey, really quickly, y'all. I just really want y'all to understand how much God loves us and how much his hand is upon our ministry. I, I really believe and I know I heard the Lord when he told me that it would be the year of connections. And I shared that this word is already being manifested in our lives. We've connected with the church at Odessa. We've connected with the, the House of Hope Church. We've connected <clears throat> even myself with somebody who's given me pastoral covering this year. So God has already manifested his word. I also want to share something about how his word continues to be made manifest. This morning I was running late, not because of my kids this time, but because I was invited to another church. And somebody say, in this same zip code. In the same zip code, anybody who knows the large church crossover church that sits on Fowler 
Um, they invited me to come and their executive pastor who's been here before wanted me. He said, hey, Pastor Keith, would you be willing to pray? We're praying about unity in the community. Um, but unbeknownst to me, they, they had a surprise uh, for me. And because of the work that the way church has been doing it, it seems like we're obscure. It seems like we're hidden. But God eyes is on all men. And he, he uses other men to recognize the work that, that, that people are doing for God. And I walk, I went, and then they were talking about how they're trying to give $50,000 away today in a day. Um, so we were one of the recipients of the money that they were giving away. And I was so overwhelmed. Uh, we're serving the same community trying to reach similar people that reside in this community. And they didn't feel intimidated, they didn't feel threatened, but they said there's a young man, there's a church that's doing the work of the Lord. And I, so I just want you to know that God is manifesting his promises over this church. So I just want us, here's what I, I'm gonna do. We're gonna post something from our church page. I just want you, even if you have a social media, say thank you to the Crossover Church. Say thank you from the Way Church family. We're very appreciative. They didn't have to give us anything, but God laid it upon their heart to help further the mission that God has called for our church. Amen. Amen. And it truly was a blessing um, to come in there. And, you know, I, I can't say they gave a whole lot of ministries and especially they were giving to different churches and they weren't even in Florida. They were in California and they were in other parts of the country. And we're literally blocks away from each other. But the, the vision that um, God has given Pastor Keith and for the church and the church family and how we work together. It's been a blessing. So we're going to go ahead and benedict in that. If you want to stand with us and if, if you're standing with a person, go ahead and grab their hand. Let's continue to make this a year of connections. Um, it seems like we're pushing through it and it's going so fast, um, but I can also see how people are getting left behind. Um, so in these moments, get someone on your mind. Someone on your mind that's not here on today. Someone on your mind that you haven't spoke to in a while. My, my sister had called me and she said one of her coworkers um, had, had passed very quickly. And when, when someone hasn't seen you in a while, there's something that they call a wellness check. And they, you call the police and you say, you know, I haven't heard from this person. No one's heard from them. I need to do a wellness check. And um, the police had, within 30 minutes, had got two wellness checks from two different people, and she had, had already went on. But on today, we don't want to be a church that forgets about someone that we haven't seen. So first, we're going to do this wellness check via prayer, because God sees them and God knows what they're going through. But after your prayer time on today, make sure you give them a call, a text message. Do a video call if, if they have that kind of technology. Let See their face. See their countenance. See where they are in their press. See where they are in their pruning. See where they are in their prayer. Ask them, when was the last time you prayed? Can I pray with you? So, dear Heavenly Father, thank you right now, God, that you said where two or three gathered, God, we surpassed that. And we gathered in your name so we know you're in the midst. Thank you for the wellness check, God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that came by here even in these moments. We thank you, God. That we had an ear to hear, God, and that our faith was increased on today. God, touch Pastor Keith. I feel him needing more hope even on today. Touch him. Give him the building blocks to his faith, God. Touch him, God. It's only by your power and by your might that he stands on today. So we thank you, God. Continue to pour into him more vision. More dreams, God. We expect more out of him only through you. But right now, God, we're making it personal, God. Fix us. Until we can return again, God. Whoever we have on our minds, whatever family member, friend, neighbor, God, we're doing a wellness check, God. Go to their house, God. Let them know that you care about them. You desire to have an intimate relationship with them right now. And God, as your servant, God, we're going to call them. 
we're going to pray for them. We're going to encourage them, God. On today, God, we won't let another 24 hours pass. Just to remind them about who you are and the power that you contain. We thank you right now, God, that you continue to be the way, the truth, and the life. And you've made a pathway to the Father through your son, Jesus. We bless you right now, God. Keep us until we can meet again. Cover all of our households, all of our cars as we travel, God. And as you continue to do your will, God, we ask for the rain, God. So we say thank you, God. Thank you that you might be able to take these things and grow us even in these moments. Everything, God. We see the results of your pruning, God. We see growth. We see the result of the pressure. We see it, God. And we see the results of your prayer. Until we meet again in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Thank you, Way Church. Until next time.